Hello, welcome to R&B Reviews. I'm Rob. I'm Brennan. And today we're going to be looking at Taking Woodstock. Uh, the movie is about a young man named Elliot Tibber. He, his parents run a, a resort called El Monaco in the Catskills. And he decides one day to put together his usual summer uh, music and arts festival. But when he hears a concert with a lot of big acts like The Who has been canceled in upstate New York, he decides that to bring them down here and create a concert which eventually involves into Woodstock. All right, well, Brendan, I don't know how you felt about this, but um, I thought the beginning, the film started out real, real great. Like, you know, it starts out with the peaceful shot of the of the town, and you got to know Elliot's parents. They run a hotel that's, you know, not in great shape. And then, of course, eventually when they get the permission to use the farm field from a neighbor to bring the concert, I, for me, the movie kind of you know, fell apart a little bit. I thought the beginning of the movie, um, I thought it was the most interesting seeing, you know, them setting up the concert and figuring out whose land they're going to use and Elliot and his family with the bank. And mm -hmm. there's one sequence I really liked with the uh, community commerce meeting mm -hmm. in the beginning. Yeah. It really sets up the town and everything, but they don't really go back to some of those things they set up in the beginning with the mm -hmm. townspeople and stuff. But mm -hmm. I agree, the beginning of the film, the first half of the film I think was stronger than the second half. Oh, yeah. Because it feels like once Woodstock gets there and the concert starts to, you know, the concert starts and everything, it, the movie tends to lose focus and wander a little. But mm -hmm. I, it didn't it didn't bother me as much. It just yeah. uh, went on a little too long. Yeah, I thought the pacing was a little off at times, and I found it to be hit and miss. But there were some good moments here and there, like the characters. All the characters, you know, uh, were very good. I mean. They didn't, nobody felt like a stereotype, although you could argue that the townspeople that don't want the concert there could be stereotypes, but I thought every, all the characters were great, I thought they were well performed. Ang Lee doesn't, definitely has a good ear for the music, and he doesn't play a lot of the 60s music in some scenes like... No, yeah, they definitely go with different things, and mm -hmm. they, try, they throw on different period music, and I, I really like that, because you know, you think you'd be listening to like Janis Joplin music, and Hendrix, and The Who, because yeah, it's Woodstock. <laughs> Yeah, they actually played uh, Judy Garland music in one scene. At one point, I liked how this film talked about some of the other things that was going on at the time. Like, they're talking about the moon landing. Uh, Judy Garland just died. I liked how they incorporated that into the movie. But I thought uh, there were some times in this movie where the I just lost interest with it. Like, um, you know, after after uh, some of the people come in, there a lot of them are staying at the hotel that Elliot's family runs. After a while, I get the you know I get the picture of how, how they are, and those sequences just seem to go on for just a little bit too long, in my opinion. Yeah, this movie probably could have been trimmed twenty minutes or so, mm -hmm. but I found it entertaining nonetheless. I mean, if you're expecting something like Detroit Rock City or Dazed and Confused, you're you're not gonna get it with no. this movie. Mm -hmm. No, I mean it's it's a little more dramatic, but it's also really funny at the same time. Yeah. One of my favorite scenes was uh, in the barn, this experimental theater group staying there. I thought they were interesting. I thought Billy, who's a, who just came back from Vietnam, who's played by Emil Hirsch, I didn't recognize him. He was really good in this part. He's apparently um, one of Elliot's old friends. I, like I really the, liked his character with his Vietnam flashbacks and yeah, stuff, and they yeah. didn't make him too stereotypical. Yeah, yeah. I liked, the, like I said, I liked the characters, every single one of them, but I wanted to see more of the townspeople that didn't want it versus the townspeople that did want it, because, you know, um, the, there were some townspeople that didn't want the festival to come, but the ones that did want it to come are mostly the business people. Like the like all the hotel rooms are booked up, and the owners are thanking Elliot for bringing the festival, but everyone else is like, "Oh, we don't want those damn hippies in here." And in the beginning, it's set up to kind of focus more on getting the concert off the ground and focusing on Elliot's family, and I wanted to see more of that. They, well, I felt when they were focusing on the concert, you know, the movie's about Elliot. He's he's our main character, so I think it was sort of about him. <laughs> having a bit of self-discovery at the concert and you know he, there's a whole acid sequence with a cameo by Paul Dano yeah. in there briefly. Yeah I thought he was really good in, the, in that cameo. I'm not a complete fan of Paul Dano. I liked him in Little Miss Sunshine. I thought he was miscast in There Will Be Blood but he was really good in that in that cameo appearance. He did a great job I think. Yeah I thought the sequence was well done and and maybe some of the stuff is like 
it feels longer at that part of the movie, but it, the film's really about Elliot, and it, it, you sort of wander with him where all the places he goes and mm -hmm. stuff, and I didn't, I didn't think it had that many bad moments. I mean, I thought um, a lot of the scenes were really good. I was interested in the character of Elliot. All the, I mean, he goes through a lot in this movie. I, I really like Liev Schreiber's role in the movie. Oh, yeah. He was really cast against yeah. type here. You know, because we've seen him uh, earlier this year. I saw him in a movie called Defiance, and we saw him in Wolverine. He's over, but here he's playing someone completely different. Yeah, like a cross-dressing security guy. I thought the movie was well shot, well directed, and well yeah, acted. The visuals so. were great. Like, there's a scene where Elliot's taking acid, and the visuals were very good in that yeah, sequence. Yeah. I like that. And the movie doesn't. The movie doesn't ever talk down or look down upon the hippie culture or anything. I mean, it's a very respectful movie. I thought. And uh, what did you think of the split screen up that that, that Angley used in this movie? Uh, I liked it. It reminded me a bit of the. Uh, you know, the documentary, I thought they used it in one particular scene where you sort of see the headquarters of the Woodstock offices, and whenever Elliot walks in there, it goes into split screen, and you sure, you sure get lost in all the noise and the shuffle, and people yeah. are arguing and trying to figure out stuff, and he's just coming in there with a couple questions, and mm -hmm. his place could pot the hotel could possibly be shut down, and he's all worried about that. Yeah, when I, when I saw the split screen, automatically I wasn't reminded of the Woodstock documentary. It kind of reminded me at first of 500 Days of Summer, which we saw uh, earlier, uh, couple, like about a month ago. And um, sometimes the split screen in this movie, Taking Woodstock, worked, but sometimes I felt like it could be a little, it was there just to be a little bit gimmicky, like it didn't add anything, I mean, except for that one sequence, but there were a couple times where I felt like it was just thrown in there just to try to be a throwback to the Woodstock documentary. Yeah, I definitely picked that up, but um, it definitely fit the culture and the kind of movie it was going for, so I would probably say see it in theaters if you have the opportunity to. I really like the movie, especially if you like the Woodstock documentary, the very popular one. I mean, I, I just think if you're into that kind of stuff, the kind of music, the kind of culture, I think you'd enjoy this movie. Yeah, I, just a little too long. Yeah, I, I'm i going to give this movie a rent it on DVD verdict. Um, It's not a bad movie. I just, to me, there just wasn't enough there for me to recommend going to the theater to see it. So it's, we're split again. Yep. Split. We haven't been split on a movie in a while. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please post any comments you have on the movie if you've seen it. And um, thank you for watching. And if you like what you saw, please subscribe. And uh, we'll see you on the next edition of our...